Only a fool thinks they have unlimited time, talent, treasure. Only a person who is an egomaniac thinks that there's an endless supply of time, endless supply of talent, endless supply of ability, endless supply of money, endless supply of this, that, and the other thing. And so the humble person looks and says, this day is all I've got. I might not have anything else. And so what do I do? I prioritize. And that prioritization then forces this thing called self-discipline. I stop wasting my life. I start living my life according to my priorities. You know, Jim Rohn said that discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. I want you to imagine I got my goals here, my dream over here. I got my accomplishment over there. How do I get from here to there? I need this beautiful thing called discipline. Hi, everybody. My name is Abe Brown, and I want to spend a couple of moments here today talking about ending self-sabotage. Now, recently, I saw some statistics that really put a chill down my spine. Did you know that Canadian men are three times more likely to engage in substance abuse than Canadian women? Not only that, but they're about four times more likely to end their own lives due to suicide. And in my view, this is all about self-sabotage. This is all about self-sabotage. Now, you might be saying here today, Abe, what is self-sabotage? I just want to pause here for a moment and get us to think about the term self-sabotage. What does it mean? Well, psychology today defines self-sabotage as behavior that creates problems and interferes with long-standing goals. So imagine you're doing things that is interfering with the goals and the vision and the dream and the direction for your life. And so really, when you think about it, self-sabotage is intentional behavior or lack of action that undermines your progress and hinders your ability to fulfill your dream, to do the thing that you said is really important to do. And self-sabotage often is a coping mechanism. We all have our copes. We all have our coping mechanisms. And oftentimes, a person who engages in self-sabotage is doing things that hold them back from fulfilling their goals or their dreams, and they are the ones who are holding themselves back from accomplishing the stuff that's most important to them. And, you know, studies have shown that up to 63% of people who have mental health issues will absolutely self-sabotage. And I think it's probably 100% of people who don't. Why? Because at one time or another, we have all engaged in self-sabotage. You know, if there's anything I've discovered in my life is that no one can sabotage me quite like I can sabotage me. I don't need anyone's help to sabotage me. I can do it all on my own. So let's talk for a moment about what I call the cycle of self-sabotage. It's really important that we understand kind of how this cycle works because it is a cycle. It's not just something that randomly happens. I think the first step in that cycle is you have low self-esteem. And so if the starting point is low self-esteem, then what ends up happening is I have an expectation of failure. That expectation of failure leads to a weak level of effort which then leads to a weak performance, which then means that my initial incorrect belief of having a low self-esteem gets reinforced, and then the cycle continues. And this is the crazy thing. Why? Because it all begins with this belief system that says, I don't have any worth, I don't have any value, I can't succeed, I can't accomplish it. And so that then belief drives your behavior, which then drives the results that only reinforce that initial incorrect belief. And so we get caught up in this cycle and tragically, we keep going down and down and down. And I tell you what, I myself have experienced the cycle of self-sabotage. I could take you to story after story in my own life where I self-sabotaged a relationship, where I self-sabotaged a business, where I self-sabotaged a career, where I self-sabotaged even goals like physical goals, like getting in shape or eating healthy. And so what's the solution? 
how do we end self-sabotage? Because if you are self-sabotaging here today, I've got great news for you. You can fix it. You can stop self-sabotaging. I'll tell you what, 2024 can be your year where self-sabotage finally ends in your life and you step into a whole new way of living, a whole new level of accomplishment where you're not self-sabotaging but you're actually moving forward. And so I want to share with you what I call four things that will help you to end self-sabotage, to end it once and for all. I don't mean to pussyfoot with it or to keep on struggling with it, but to absolutely end self-sabotage once and for all. And so let me go ahead and give them to you. The first thing I've discovered is that self-sabotage ends when self-worth begins. Okay, I'm going to say that again. Self-sabotage ends when self-worth begins. I think one of the most important things we have to ask ourselves is, what is my price? In other words, what am I worth? How much do I matter? We only sabotage the things that don't matter. And so for years in my life, I was self-sabotaging, not because I was a bad guy or some dummy, but because I didn't think I mattered. I mean, now think about it for a moment. You will destroy the things that don't matter to you. You will wreck the things that don't matter to you. And I think that a lot of the time, we don't have a vision of our price. We don't have a vision of our worth. We don't have a vision of how much we are absolutely worth. And you know, the funny thing is, is sometimes we say, I've said it, well, I don't have great self-worth because I never got it growing up and because I was abused or because I was abandoned or because other people told me this and other people told me that. But then a certain light bulb switched in my life when I recognized I do have worth, I do have value. And it's not because you said it, or you said it, or you did it, or someone else did it, but because I chose it. You know what Eleanor Roosevelt said? This was so brilliant. She said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. And I realized in my life that I had been consenting to low self-worth. I had been consenting to feeling like my price was low, like my mattering was low, like my value was low. And I just think that is a horrible thing. So please stop. You know, Buddha said, you yourself, as much as anybody in the universe, deserve your love and affection. And so I want you to think about your beautiful son, your beautiful daughter. I want you to think about your beautiful partner. I want you to think about your friends, your family. Of course, all of these people have a sense of of worth and value that you give them. And you would never sabotage them. Why? Because they're worth something. Their price is high. Tell you what, give that same price to yourself. Self-sabotage ends the moment self-worth begins. The second thing I've discovered is that self-sabotage ends when self-discovery begins. And so the first one is self-worth, but the second is self-discovery. Now, what are we talking about when we're talking about self-discovery? Like, do I have to go to an ashram somewhere or climb a mountain, a top of a mountain and find a temple with a bunch of monks? I mean, I'm not saying that's wrong. Go ahead and do whatever tickles your fancy. Do you know what I'm saying? But I don't think you need to do that to find your worth But I also don't think you need to do it to find your purpose. I, you, all of us, we need to know our purpose. We only sabotage the things that does not have a purpose in our lives. Like, think about it. If you had a sense of purpose about something, you would never sabotage it. Why? Because you know that it has a particular purpose purpose or reason. I mean, I've got this thing right here called a mug. And notice how every part of this mug actually has a purpose. The handle has a mug because if the mug is is filled with hot drink, guess what happens? If it's filled with hot drink, I can't hold on to it like this. And so the handle allows me to hold on to it. If I don't know the purpose of the handle on this mug, I'll just knock the handle off. Who cares? But the moment I understand that there's actually a purpose for this mug, it's to hold my hot beverage, but also a purpose for the handle. Guess what? I don't self-sabotage it. Now think about this for a minute. You know that studies show Statistics Canada, I'm in Canada, probably the numbers are the same in the United States, very similar. Did you know that they found that 43%, 43%, that's four out of 10 Canadian men feel no strong sense of purpose. 
And they found that 39%, that's still like four out of 10 Canadian women felt no strong sense of purpose. No wonder we're self-sabotaging. Why? Because we don't see that there's a purpose for our lives. We don't see that there's actually a reason we were put here. This mug has a purpose. I'm not going to smash it on the ground like some beast, like some animal. I'm going to love it. I'm going to cherish it. I'm going to wash it. I'm going to take care of it. Why? Because it has a purpose. It serves me. And I'll tell you what, we got to find our purpose. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are number one, the day you were born. Okay, that day is really, really important. But the second most important day, maybe even the more important one, is the day you find out why. And in my book, Getting Where You Need to Go, I'm, I am the master of corny sayings. I'm sorry, I'm a dad. So I love my dad jokes. And I have said this for years, that when you lose your why, you can say goodbye. When you lose the purpose of a thing, you will sabotage it. When you lose your purpose, I'll tell you what, you will sabotage it. 2024 is your year to find your purpose and to not let anything take your purpose away. Stop it. Stop giving in to the hopelessness that's out there. Stop giving in to the social media narrative that says you don't have any value. You don't have any purpose. You don't have any worth. You don't have anything that is worth living for. You have a purpose. Now, you might have to dig deep to find it. You might have to dig deep to discover it. You might have to dig deep to to go further and sort of figure it out, I'll tell you what, if that's you, you're not alone. Many of us have had to dig deep and say, what's my purpose? What's my reason for being? But that going deep is better than self-sabotage. And so stop the self-sabotage. It ends when self-discovery begins. The third thing I've discovered is that self-sabotage ends when self discipline begins. Now, now we're talking serious things. I'll tell you, What I've discovered is people self-sabotage when they lack discipline. And where does discipline come from? Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. I had a friend, and this friend was a a part of a religion. I might as well just say it. Not that I don't have a problem with it, but this person was a Catholic. And I'm married to Catholics. I don't have a problem with with, uh, Catholicism. I don't have a problem with it at all. I think it's great. But this person actually would hit themselves when they would make mistakes, okay? They would hit themselves when they made mistakes. It was actually brutal. I I remember like saying, why are you hitting yourself? And they're like, well, because I need to make penance for the sin that I just committed. That's literally what they said to me. And, And they somehow thought that by punishing themselves, that that would bring discipline into their lives. And I'm like, you know, and and they've been doing this for years. I remember Albert Einstein said, if what you're doing isn't working, change it. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You see, if I have a lack of discipline in my life, it's not because I am lazy. It's not because I need to start hitting myself with some kind of penance. That's just plain silly. It's because I don't have a clear sense of my priorities. Discipline flows from knowing your priorities. I'll tell you, people always ask me, Abe, how come you're so disciplined? And I'm like, I'm actually not disciplined. But one thing I know is my priorities. And I'm not going to let you tell me my priorities. I'm not going to let the government tell me my priorities. I'm sure as heck not going to let some random weirdo on social media tell me my priorities. My priorities are the things that I wake up every day. I pray my creator talks to me and says, here's what is important to you. And I have made a decision at a point in my life that I'm going to live according to my priorities. And so that means discipline. That means discipline. Like how, what other choice do I have? Now, what is, what is, what is prioritization? Prioritization is humility. That's what it is. Okay. The most humble thing you can do is not walk around and say, oh gosh, shucks, I kind of suck. No, that's not humility. That's weird. Okay. Humility is recognizing this. I am limited. My time is limited. My talent is limited. My treasure is limited. I only have so much time. I only have so many talents. I only have so much treasure or money. That's humility. And out of that limitation, I budget my time, talent, and treasure, and I line it up to my priorities. That, I can't think of anything more humble. Only a fool thinks they have unlimited time, talent, treasure. Only a person who is an egomaniac 
thinks that there's an endless supply of time, endless supply of talent, endless supply of ability, endless supply of money, endless supply of this, that, and the other thing. And so the humble person looks and says, this day is all I've got. I might not have anything else. And so what do I do? I prioritize. And that prioritization then forces this thing called self-discipline. I stop wasting my life. I start living my life according to my priorities. You know, Jim Rohn said that discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. So I want you to imagine I got my goals here, my dream over here. I got my accomplishment over there. How do I get from here to there? I need this beautiful thing called discipline. Did you know, I saw a statistic the other day that horrified me. It horrified me. I wonder if you are horrified by it as well. And it was that by the age of 21, the average boy or man, young man, averages 14,000 hours of gaming. Okay, I want you to just imagine that for a minute. Do you know how long it takes that experts tell us to become expert at anything. You can be an amazing public speaker, an amazing plumber. You can be an amazing coder if you put 10,000 hours into it. You can be a concert level pianist if you put 10,000 hours into it. And you'll see people who will bitch and complain and whine and cry because you're like, hey man, learn social media. Hey man, learn finance. Hey man, learn budgeting. Hey woman, learn how to run your business. Hey, learn this. Hey, learn that. And they're like, oh my God, it's so hard. You want me to spend 50 hours learning that, right? It's like, I'm like, what are you talking about? You're trying to build your life here. You're trying to build your business here. You're trying to crush it. And you're whining about 50 hours? You can't become expert at anything on 50 hours. I'll tell you what, you and I are wired the same as human beings. We got to do the work if we want the results. We got to do the work if we want to accelerate. We got to do the work if we want to fulfill our dreams. And I say this with all due respect. Why? Because I'm that guy who used to whine. I'm that person who used to cry. And yeah, I'm that person who used to be the guy who would rather spend, you know, hours and hours and hours gaming or hanging around or, or chilling out or just wasting my life rather than focused on my priorities. And so, you know, what is self-sabotage? Well, if you don't have discipline, you're self-sabotaging yourself. You are harming your destiny because every moment you give to something that's not connected to your priorities is literally wasted. And so the third thing that will hinder us, you know, or or the third thing that will break self-sabotage is when we start to develop self-discipline. Let me go ahead and give you one more. Self-sabotage ends when self-isolation begins. What do we need? We need mature relationships. In other words, I need to know my people. What do I mean by that? Immature relationships are just so desperate or sorry, let me reframe that. Immature people are so desperate for relationships that they will settle for an immature relationship in order to meet their need for relationships. They don't have any healthy boundaries. They don't have any healthy expectations. They don't have a level of strength in terms of what they will tolerate and the kind of person that they will bring into their lives. And so what ends up happening is they self-sabotage because they constantly put themselves into immature relationships that are hurting them. And then they get so hurt that they begin to self-isolate and it becomes this vicious cycle. So imagine I'm an immature person. So then I go out there into the world and I attract immature people. These immature people hurt me. Therefore, I go further into my cave. And when I come out of my cave just to try a new relationship, I'm I'm, I'm a little more broken than I was the last time. And so then I attract people who are just a little bit more broken, who hurt me just a little bit more. Therefore, this cycle continues and it's, it's horrible. So what do we need to do? Well, give up on relationships? Of course not. That's the tragedy. I mean, did you know, I saw another stat that horrified me too, and that that is that 63% of 18 to 34-year-old Canadian men experience considerable loneliness and isolation. 63%, that's two out of three. And, 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 and so what's the problem? Am I blaming the guys? No, I'm not. I'm not blaming the guys or the girls. What I'm saying is we are a lonely generation, and yet we've never been more connected than we are today. 
And I think it's not because there's no people to have relationships with. It's because we don't know who our people are. We settle for dysfunction. We settle for codependency. We settle for toxicity because it's the only thing we know. And that, my friends, is the definition of self-sabotage, right? <laughs> like that, like it doesn't get any cleaner, any plainer, any more simple than that. And so what do we need to do? Well, we need to start valuing ourselves enough that we pick the relationships around us that will feed us and support us. And that might mean we might have to say no to people who actually aren't supporting us and in, in the long run. Now, I have some friends who make me feel great in the moment, but I had to pull myself away from them, not because they were like hurting me, but because the trajectory that they were on was different than the trajectory that I'm on. And, and so oftentimes you start by thinking who's hurting me and we pull back from those relationships. That's step one. Yes, yes, and more yes. But then the second thing we have to start to look at is trajectory. In other words, where are we going? And I don't want to be putting myself in relationships with people who are happy to stay comfortable, who are happy not to grow, because if I'm surrounding myself with those people, then I'm not going to get the kind of challenge that I need. You've all heard the Jim Rohns of this world, the wise sages and teachers telling us that nothing in your life will change in the, in the next five years unless you change the relationship. So five years from today, you'll be the same person that you are, just a little bit older, based on the relationships that you surround yourself with. So I don't know about you. I want to be around people who don't make me comfortable. I want to be around people who call me higher. And I'm constantly in my own life thinking, I don't want to self-sabotage by always just needing to be with my boyfriends, my girlfriends, the people who pat me on the back and tell me everything's okay. I don't mind being challenged. I actually want to be challenged. Challenge is the way that we grow. When you get out of your comfortable comfort zone, you will step in to a whole new place of growth and life and advancement. So I hope this has been helpful to you. If you've been self-sabotaging, you know what? It's time to stop. I'll tell you what, you're not the only one. Self-sabotage ends when self-worth begins, when self-discovery begins. Wow. Imagine the power of discovering yourself and how important it is. Okay. So self-worth helps us end self-sabotage. Self-discovery helps us end self-sabotage. Self-discipline helps us end self-sabotage. And when we stop self-isolation, then self-sabotage can begin. And so please stop self-isolating. Reach out, go to failuretoflourishing.com and I'll tell you what, we would love to surround you with a community that's going to help you get where you need to go. And so if this has been helpful to you, please do give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in our next episode.